previously on the Mike Knox show. Executive consultant. What, what you were hearing out there? Because to me, I thought this match, again, cheating, watching it live and coming home and watching it again. I saw everything, as I said, the women's had and the Fatal 4-Way match had and the U.S. title match had. It just kept continuing and continuing. Anybody who knows Mike Knox show, 15 years, shit, I can't, it's too much, you know, whatever it is. I've always said wrestling is storyline. I thought this Rumble portrayed that at its best, executive consultant. Yeah, before I, I talk about this match, I, I hate to backtrack, but I forgot I yeah. wanted to mention this. This was a shout out uh, to Michael Cole uh, for something that he said. I just wanted uh, to Oh, I was going to bring it up after we went back to that match. You son of a bitch. Hey, Go I got to mention it. You know, Michael Cole said. <laughs> Absolutely. For Andy, hey, you know what? I could tell Vince is somewhat gone. I can't believe I mentioned him again. Sure but did. We love to hear the discussions from WWE fans from about, well, Roman Reigns has to defend every week. Roman Reigns only defends with the title every couple of months. Here's what I have to say about that. Beat him. At the Beat end him. of the day, say what you want, complain about it. It doesn't matter because Roman Reigns' record selling, setting 1,246 days as WWE champion continues. That was a crystal clear FU Right, because there's a reason why he is your tribal chief, and I'm not even saying that in character like I normally do. I'm saying it because it's the truth. There's a reason why he's your tribal chief. There's a reason he's had the championship that long. And until somebody can come across that can beat him, it's the truth. Uh, this Royal Rumble match, 30 man battle, uh, Royal Rumble match, I thought was very well done. People call it the weakest of the two. I think it might be a little bit right. Um, one thing that I will say about this as opposed to the last Royal Rumble, though, with the women's, the only credit I will give it and give it a step over is the fact that and there were times, especially in the 20s of the women's mm -hmm. Royal Rumble, where I was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, <laughs> Shotzi, oh, God, oh, yeah. God. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have that problem except for number 29 being Ricochet with the men's Royal Rumble, right? He um, still went home with Samantha Irvin last night, so he's still and, As you pointed out, and she is also up there to be just as uh, attractive to me to, to me as Jay Cargill. So I've always had a crush on Samantha Irvin. Now, that being said, um, I thought it was very well done. I, I don't, uh, This right here, I'm glad it came up. This is what I said between, I don't know, it was Jay Cargill and Bianca or Usos being yeah. side by side. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little they, bit to Bianca. They, 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 that's because of, yeah, the, for me, for the female factor of it. But this is right there, and no offense towards Jeff from the Raw Review Show, which is your tag team partners on Monday. What in the blue hell was, a, was you watching and listening to? I read that chat. Are you insane? We were in the building. Okay, so it don't even matter what you think you saw at home because I came home and saw it and it was still the same reaction. Now, I, I watched that too and I was like, hold on, I, I don't get where he not here. Some people, some matches I in or interests, I was like, okay, I can hear where it sounds a little silent. This did not sound silent at all. First of all, Jay Uso, I've said it over and over and over again. <laughs> Jay Uso might be the most with the fans, right? Understand what I mean by that? Most over wrestler in WWE world, really. That man had Tropicana rocking. Rocket. It was a Thunderdome. The Thunderdome would have been rocking. That's how over the man was when he came out. They gave him a two and a half minute entrance because they could not they could not get past the visual of the entire crowd. And even though we were like twenty nine thousand feet, we were doing like this. <laughs> oh, I tried to go this whole program I'm without sorry. mentioning that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna do it. We were like this, right? I literally saw, I'm lying, I didn't see. But I literally saw Jay, Luca, Jay Uso look at us and say, I see you. No, this bitch ass didn't see us. But he's like, oh, he's just, I didn't even know, care who was number two. And then here comes Jimmy Uso with some fire ass music. I don't think anybody, anybody says Jimmy Uso has some very good music, right? And he's been portrayed as a clown. Clown. So much. For the whole match. Months. The whole no, match. No, no, no. I'm not even just talking about the match. I'm talking about periods. Since, yeah. since he, you know, went back to the bull eyes, which portrayed yeah. as a clown. But the visual of these two, who Jay Uso has not been portrayed as a clown, mm -hmm. made it, and, and the fact that it still looked like a big moment shows how much Jimmy is still getting over. And he was, in my opinion, as much as the MVP for the men's World Rumble. Why? Not because he was dominant like Nia, but as what Mike just said, a clown throughout the whole match, he was trying to get that from every heel in that everybody. match. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> shunned him, and he was just playing it all off every single time because he's very good. 
Mike said something unpopular that some people got on his ass about last night. He said, hey, are we going to acknowledge the fact that Jimmy is better in the ring? That Jimmy <laughs> is better on the bike? And people looked at him like he's crazy. I was quiet. Why was I quiet? Mike knows when I get quiet. It means I don't disagree with you. You're not wrong, man. You are not wrong. Jimmy is very good at what he does, and I just think he carried a lot of this World Rumble. Next to Dirty Dom. Listen, first of all, this moment shows you yet again why the, why the fuck you stand up with my bad voice if my children can hear me. That man did this, <laughs> okay? Because I don't remember y'all sitting here saying a Musa and all that stuff from day one-ish. Y'all wear them shirts, but y'all wasn't day one-ish. I was entirely with this family. And look where they come. Not one came out with a lay. They both came out with a lay. They came out one and two. The way that crowd definitely is popping for Jay. It's no doubt about it. That crowd loves Jay Uso. Okay? But that crowd also respects Jimmy Uso. Go watch Power. Go watch the husband and wife review show, Raising Kane in season eight. They ask Kane the question, you, which one you think is better? Which one you want? You want to be feared or you want to be respected? Learn it. Go watch the review show. You know where I'm going with that. But for my children wrestling fans, one and two, the way they looked at each other to stare down. Damn right. This was the, this was the Knox moment of the night, part 1.1a. Because the crowd was crazy. The storyline was crazy. Watching them home on TV, watching the facial expressions. Like, you serious? <laughs> Are you, my man Jay said, what you doing here, Oops? <laughs> like, I'm number Jay's two. Always, Jay's always been very good with the uh, the facial expressions, right? <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's what put him over, I think, initially. But he was very well done when he looked at Jimmy. He looked disgusted. Like. <laughs> he looked completely disgusted. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you be here? And then we get the return of Andrade to the rubble. Shout out shout to out Steve. To Wall shout out to Grayson Waller, th uh, number three, coming out with the microphone, too. But, oh, yeah, well, I, I didn't put this, you know, right. Yeah, Grayson I know, Waller, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm Grayson just Waller definitely did, did his thing at three. But I want to say, shout out to Steve. Uh, listen, I will forever go always bet on black. I got to respect any, you, you supposed to be proud of your rates, your heritage and whatnot. And that man, Steve clapped for every damn Latino wrestler that came out. That man stood up out of his seat. Okay. <laughs> and started to dance. Okay. But Andrade had a, an appearance and we all know why he's there because, you know, I'm not going to do it. My voice is not here right now. And she was Charlotte Flair is the greatest the, wrestling, a woman's she, wrestler of all time. She, she wasn't yeah. part of the pay-per-view. She right? is the reason why he returned. She is definitely the reason I why he returned. I didn't say nothing. No, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm giving you your props. You're right. He, you're absolutely right. And Rusev will be there too. It wasn't the fact that CJ Perry is in the greatest women's wrestler. Oh, God. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> just say it. Yeah, you were setting Good. it up while you were waiting to play that clip. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Good job. <laughs> I wouldn't even talk right. about this. So uh, I didn't want to talk. This is your yeah. first L. Uh, you, did a, you, did a, you did a fantastic job. <laughs> this doesn't even need to be talked about. I'm gonna tell you why Bobby, he talked about it because I know Lashley, him. Because Bobby Lashley deserves more than this. Well, yeah, but he got a big he got a big ovation. Everybody loved him and stuff like that. I don't want to talk about this shit because it's so disrespectful. He came out for what three minutes to get I, I, this I, dumbass I, shit. I'm glad he brought it up because I want to point out the difference of, again, sticking up for my heritage, sticking up for my people, and all black wrestlers matter to me. And I think my problem with that group in NXT, with, um, with Rich, right? My problem with, honestly, in the beginning, with Street Profits. I feel like every single time there's a black representation of a wrestler, they're either cooning or 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 they're or they're or they're hood. That's why I love David Otongo so much. I don't care what you thought about him. He was a freaking lawyer from Harvard. He was the black uh what's the boy who had the brain cancer that went to Harvard. You know what I mean? Nowinski. Okay. Chris that's Nowinski. who yeah, that's who so David he Bobby Lashley is the only you can't say with the rock, the rock's Fucking The Rock. That doesn't even count. He did that shit. You know what I'm saying? And they promote his Samoan side. Bobby Lashley is the only black wrestler that's actually almighty. 
And the Almighty is earth better than just going out from this trash. And you, you start screaming like, what took y'all so damn long street properties to get out here? They weren't yeah. even in the rubble. As soon they as wasn't the, even in the as rubble. As soon as ALP or some group uh, in front of me starts walking out. APA uh, starts walking out, you should have known. She probably shouldn't have ran out out there. But, I mean, it was just, it was, I'd rather not be in the World Rumble. What do you think about Omas? Uh, Omas, <laughs> they said, hey, we have a multi-man match. You ready? Omas said yes. Omas only wrestles on... He's an attraction. Uh, on live events. He's right? an attraction. He's an attraction. Because, realistically speaking, they could not have him come out and always make uh, lose. And then if he always wins, they have to go after the title. He ain't win no damn title. So it was good, actually, to see Omos. I think he's um, uh, a good talent. Uh, he ain't, you know, giving you no five-star matches. That's not his bag. That's not what he's supposed to do. Uh, but it was nice to see Omos uh, there. So I, I was happy with it. And, and they spoke about it. So I hope that's coming up because... Um, and it was not there, so we're going to speak about it real fast. And the chat spoke about him. Braun fucking Breaker. Yeah. And y'all see the slight differences here, and you should if you're watching NXT. They brought him up like this before. They made us forget. They always do the damn Men in Black, you forgot shit to us. He made his debut. This wasn't his debut. <laughs> right? But he came up right before. He went back, got repackaged. I like the darker. I'm a huge fan of Wolf Dogs. <laughs> okay, him and Baron Corbin. But he came back to the main roster, doesn't have on the dark colors, doesn't have that stuff on. He was bright, right? They made him, and the crowd knew him, and, and they, they, they popped for him, and the, the ropes, you spoke about it. The commentator, if you were watching at home, spoke about it. You must have knew that. So he's talking about this man, Braun Breaker, put on a hell of a performance, and he threw out a monster. Okay, he did a hell of a, the, the shit with him and Pat McAfee. They didn't want to come up in there. You know what I mean? Shout out to Pat McAfee, who always a banging job to me on commentary. I don't like he said, what was that thing? That's a back, that's a man. You know that's a man. Call that man a man, not a thing. Uh, other than that, Pat McAfee, that performance I thought was hilarious and funny, but this was your fight on four. A lot of people predicted this would be the final four. It was barring, very obvious that it was the number yeah, four. Barring um, a somebody showing up at 30, which we did not get. We got Sami Zayn at 30. The final six to me for the men was better than the final six for, for the women because of you, you did have um, the different contrast of the sides. It's like they had heels and faces on one side. I thought that was pretty damn dope um, from that perspective. But this was your final four, Chris. Go ahead. Um, I want to give a shout out to Dirty Dom simply because I want to give a shout out to Dirty yeah, Dom. Yeah, I mean, forget about that too. Yeah, he, thank you. He, even though he didn't really have any big eliminations or anything like that, but even when he came out and his music played, mm -hmm. the heat this man gets, which is why he walked slowly to the ring and not ran like everybody else. He just walked around the ring because he was trying to draw them in, and he does a very good job. That place loves to boo Dominic Mysterio, and every place I've been to loves to boo Dominic Mysterio. Very good job. He was disrespected in that World Rumble because they had the counter of all those wrestlers and how long they've been in there. And Cody was number two and really was supposed to be Dirty Dom. And I felt that was a little messed up, right? So shout out to him. Shout out to all oh, the on the on the screen with the yeah, yeah. how long they've been you in pointed there. that out. You definitely I, they, that I, was I, pretty white. It was yeah. stupid. Um respect him. Okay. He was even if he didn't throw anybody out, he was in there for at least. Maybe it was an era. You know what I mean? Maybe they did an error. The WWE doesn't make those kind of errors. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Here's a mistake. Our truth making a mistake can come out during the women's uh, War Rumble. Uh, which no, that, thank you. Thank Sarah you, Logan. <laughs> At 24, right? They come back yeah. and that's when. Did you and hear what he said didn't. when you watch it at home? Not what did he say? So Adam Pierce says, this is the women's World yeah, Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah, man yeah. said, you tell me all of them is women? <laughs> <laughs> he is very, very good. Uh, him coming out, the Awesome Truth uh, reunion, which I still think is your uh, the team that's going to take the tag team titles from the Judgment Day, possibly. Um, so I was happy to see them in action. It was funny to see them back, and then as the Miz was about to throw Dirty Dom out, uh, our truth did the okie doke with uh, Dom and said, "This is my partner." What <laughs> was going on? The hot tag segment. The hot was tag very, was very my good. yeah, man. Uh, I've never seen it, and, and something you know, after almost forty years of the War Rumble for us to see something we've never seen before, I think is a remarkable. Shout out to Kyrie Sane for the way she was eliminated, but she held on because that was mm -hmm. I know that's how painful that is. Uh, but the hot tag thing was never done in the War Rumble before, so the fact that they did it, I thought was very, very well done. Speak on Dom on that too, because I mean, and of course when that's been that's been yeah, there, because yeah, I'm speaking, I'm speaking storyline. This is why I love the NXT show. I love Ron's and 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 and, and Barbara's perspective, Barbara's you know, of being just straight fans of it, not trying to pick, you know, how us wrestling fans we do that. Like 
that that storyline's so great that Dom's like, what the hell you doing? But like, he knows he has to get some help. And he's like, I got to tag him. And he's going to help me. Then if I just give in to our truth and tag him and have that happen. I thought that was fun. I mean, that, that segment was just all the way funny. I threw in J.D. McDonough to get kicked right back out. <laughs> mm -hmm. The whole thing, like you said, with, with him and Awesome, uh, uh, awesome Truth was mm -hmm. just great. Shout out to wrestling fans that can always help the youth around us when they don't understand what's going on and remember and people, that's the thing about going to these events. I always tell people they're not made to be watched on television. They're good yeah. to see on TV, but you got to be there or be square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the fans around you, the chants that are going, those who don't like your chant do like your chant. Like when Roman's coming out, we literally like, get a fuck up. What is wrong with you guys? Get on your damn feet. <laughs> Acknowledge your trial. Yeah, I told him I didn't see enough analogy. I didn't no. see the phenomenon. But, but it was no. but it was actually a lot though of people go because we were because we were twenty <laughs> when you say twenty nine thousand feet <laughs> from the rest of the world at this point. But uh this was your final four though, and I'm gonna say this unpopular review is this is unpopular view wrestling. Steve, I think you won me over with the Gunther thing. Fans. I think we are blinded sometimes to what we were not used to seeing and getting something. And again, I don't want to be a walking contradiction that I think everybody's a walking contradiction. I love my man, Wise the Bass, the one we call Wise, that track, a walking contradiction. All I saw in this damn match was chops. <laughs> like, like, and then maybe something about other matches that Gunther has. And I don't like Gunther, right? I do. Uh, I do. But like, oh, it's the thing. That man did the same shit for how long was he in that damn match for? It was nothing different. He was in there for 35 minutes. and, and uh, Tell me I'm, tell me when I'm telling lies. <laughs> I wasn't ever going to say it out loud, but the man said something. When I was watching the, uh, the, the match last night, I swear to God, I saw my head. I saw him chop somebody. And I said, damn, if he's going to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that in my head. I was like, is he going to do something else? Is he going to shop? That's all I was thinking. And I'm like, I like Gunther, so I don't want to add to the, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. very powerful in my stance I, I on love, wrestlers. I, I, Gunther is one of my favorites right now. Yes, so I, I, I love him. I, but from damn. his matches, I've seen, yes, he can obviously do more than chops. But last night was not it. Uh, as far as <laughs> last night was proven what Steve was saying a little bit more. But he did a good job. Um, I'll say this. The final four here. The person who I think did the best, uh, and you people might disagree with me. Oh, no, I know you're going to say what it is. It, it was. It was, it was it Drew was. McIntyre. It Drew McIntyre went out there and, and did his thing, man. Did. He went out there and did his thing. Proving why. I was pissed off by that, by the way. Uh, I felt like whoever was not going to win, whether it be Cody or CM Punk, should be the one to eliminate Gunther. We didn't need to see Cody uh, eliminate him again and then win the World Rumble. Uh, Punk gets over on, on McIntyre. Um, that's not the match, think, though. I unless unless Seth, be, can't unless, yeah, Seth, Seth can't go. If Seth can't go. If Seth can't go, this is your match. Drew McIntyre and, and uh, Cody Rhodes. But, I mean, CM Punk. But Drew McIntyre, you can put him anywhere because he's that good. I wasn't a fan. Like I said, I'm not a fan of him winning back-to-back. -back. Um, and I know, don't dislike Cody. I know sometimes it might come across. I'm actually a big Cody fan. Yeah, I know. I just feel like he's overproduced at times. And for people, our internet wrestling base Fans always hate people who overproduce, but they love him some Cody Rhodes. But he's overproduced. Like the man came out and had his full fucking entrance. Right? First of all, you are gonna stop? You gonna stop? I don't stop. You, you was bringing it up last night. No, absolutely not. Entrance, he had the smoke. It wasn't his... <laughs> he had the pyro. He had everything except for he didn't go on the uh, turnbuckle and do this. And I'm surprised they didn't do that shit. Right? Typically, only the first two get their entrances. Right? Well, he Typically. got all his. He got all his because. All his. What he has done, again, going to the press conference and what he's done and why I knew last year he wouldn't win. That's all. I didn't. This year's what it is. It's me being a Roman fan from day one when you guys wanted to fight me and boo me and didn't like Roman. Um, always been a day one fan uh, for, for him. Always been a Cody fan. Um, something just how they are. And I didn't want that story. I thought the other belt wouldn't matter. But he even says last night in the press conference, no offense, don't disrespect to Seth, as he's making that belt prestigious. I want the one that matters to this company. And, and I looked, and I had all the intents in my mind thinking that uh, Chicago made punk, uh, which is from Rosemont, by the way, um, would win the Royal Rumble, okay? And first thing my kids said to me, who'd you want for? I said earlier in the show. 
I didn't care when it all was said and done because it's Cody and he does deserve the win. And Philadelphia's a big city for Dusty also. Must we not forget how big Philly is for Dusty, right? And well, Dusty's big everywhere. And even says in the comment, I'm talking to my wife and I'm like, how hard must it be for Cody to always have to be reminded of his father, that emotion. If somebody had to bring up my mother to me every single time they spoke to me, I have her friends now will send me a message. I'm like, ah, I don't want to hear that. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my wife said, that. yeah, you know, and, but my wife said, uh, it's an honor. That's it. That's how it is. I mean, you, it's, it's an honor that his father's that spoken about and that much. And what Cody has done for this business, we said it before, the sledgehammer things, all the jokes aside, this man has earned it because money talks, bullshit walks. This man went without a promotion of a company, without any major backing with the help of his friends and did sold out. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's impressive what he do. And they, they love his mind. They love what he's come back. And then he, the, he went away and he came back home. And I think Cody hundred percent, uh, deserved the night. Um, and then in this moment, we know where it's going. He said in the press conference, uh, uh where it was going. I, I like this men's Royal Rumble he, more he, than most people do. He, he, I was about to say, he said at the end of the war Rumble, actually, he said, I'm coming yeah. for you, Roman. Yeah. Right you know, you, you're right. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. said it, you're, you're off air. That was the we saw that. That was the quickest. Uh, <laughs> this is the match I'm going for in the, uh, of all time. history. That was in the in the history of who who you're going for titles. That's for damn Shizor. Um, but um, over and overall, your 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 thoughts on Royal Rumble uh, 2024, the road to WrestleMania. Um. So when we left, I was sitting here talking to David because I went to the last two Royal Rumbles with the technician. The last three now. Um, and I said that I enjoyed it better than 2022's in St. Louis, but I did not like it as much as 2023's in San Antonio. Uh, then I was talking to my friend Pete, who I, I, you know, I was told earlier today is going to be a joke for the rest of the year. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he said to me, comparison is the killer of joy. Yeah. Uh, and I said, I'm going to put it on my Twitter, and I'm going to say it now because that is very good. That's the truth. Because when you do compare like that, it takes away from – did you have fun and did you enjoy yourself? Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, and I feel like I'm doing UPRE. Shout out to UPRE on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They, they, but UPR was in the building as well. We, UPR we had, was in the building. I was, I was, I was segueing into that. But shout okay. out to UPRE uh, for, because and the reason I come and say segue, I mean, shout out to UPRE, is because I um, wholeheartedly believe uh, that at the end of the day, and I say this in UPRE, at the end of the day, the question should be, did you enjoy yourself? Mm -hmm. That should be the question. And at the end of the day, I still did enjoy myself. I still had fun. So, yeah, we did. And then the fact of the matter is, this is the very first, outside of WrestleMania 38, mm -hmm. right? We had a lot of people there. UPRE was in the house and UP, I'm sorry, UPR, I'm like Mike now, Mike always did UPR. <laughs> UPRW was in the house. We represented all weekend. We represented. Shout out uh, to lo lo local time. pro wrestling. Shout out to local pro wrestling. Uh, it was a great time. And you can't duplicate, you can't ask for better situations. I mean, yeah, we could, we could have been in Skybox and stuff like that. Uh, but once again, <laughs> comparison is the killer of joy. I had a great time. So good of it. Good War Rumble, in my opinion. It was not bad at all. Um, I would give it a, I gave it a rating. I would give it a solid B. If I did a belt thing that y'all do, I would say four out of five, you could pick your championship. Um, I like Phil's comment here. Um, and I was going to mention this in my final take, but uh, just intelligent wrestling fans think alike. Uh, and this was also brought up in the press conference that Bailey brought up. She said uh, it was good that there was no legends there. That just showed the progression of the locker room for the women. We didn't need the legends to be there for this. There was just too many people to give us spot away to. And then you can't get everybody on the card. You can't do that. That's why I felt this was so good because from women's to men's to fatal four-way match, I felt everything was per per perfectly represented in the storyline in which they were already telling us up to this point. And with a lot of speculations were going to this point, we still don't have all the answers or know what's going to happen to this point. It's so much to take. I can't wait for tomorrow where we see Jay Cargill on Raw, where we see Jay Cargill on SmackDown, 
Where would she end up at? What is going to happen with Seth Rollins tomorrow? CM Punk did lose. How does he come back from that? And I got to say this, as a CM Punk fan, this was mentioned, I can't go without being on because the Punk haters are out there. So they're going to say it and think, yo, I'm just being a blind lead CM Punk fan. No, it's not the same uh, CM Punk. Y'all remember he went to AM um, MMA and got his ass whooped? That took a, 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 a toll on that man. He got his ass whooped in, in, you, in MMA. Okay? Yeah, and then he can see it last night. He can see it last night. You know. But he's, he was... It's, it's, to me, it's like the Jordan effect against LeBron. It's not a Jordan-LeBron conversation. LeBron may be a better athlete than Michael, some would say. But to me, LeBron's not the GOAT because Michael's not the GOAT because he's a better overall basketball player. It's the perception of him, right? Yeah. CM Punk is selling the perception of himself of still being great. And he has such a cult following me being one of the dummies of, of, of them. Again, I, I, I look in my closet and I look like CM Punk, Roman Reigns, Jonathan Horatio Rodriguez, Tom Brady, Cena. I, I have so many of the damn shirt collections. It's Kevin Owens is like in there, Dolph Ziggler's in there, but I have like a lot of those shirts. Like my wife, I can't almost just say, is that the same shirt you have except for the other one in the closet is white? <laughs> That's the first thing she said to me. You know, when I showed her, showed her my shirt. But for me, this Royal Rumble, I, I'm being honest with you, being in the moment of being there, um, I, I, I did not enjoy it as much as I could because of our seating arrangements. Again, you, you take the uh, the bat with the good. We came together as a group. As a group, you have to bend the knee as a group. And we stepped together, right? So it wasn't the best seat, but we were together. And so to, to get the advice of my wife to be like, hey, just enjoy yourselves. It's not, this is not that. Um, I had a great time in that aspect, but for me, it wasn't as enjoyable because I really couldn't see. I don't want to watch the screen. Right. And we were that and we and we said in the section, I think we were we were pissing people off in a section that were happy with their seats. Because we were openly like, yeah, this is the worst seat I've ever had. And they were just like, what, what the hell are you tapping a picture of? Because and they were in the screen? They were happy to just be there. No, you're right. And a lot of people are that way, hundred percent. And that's why I was I was going with that. You know what I mean? I'm not happy just being in the building. Okay, when you go from front row. So what they say from the from the penthouse to the outhouse? Nah, bro, I don't do the outhouse. I'm bigger and better than that. That will never happen for Mike Knox again. So coming home and getting to watch it again and seeing it from that perspective, to me, man, this is this is one of my favorite Royal Rumbles. And I'm not even joking when I say that living in the moment. I just thought, again, my favorite component of professional wrestling is storyline. And it was so good. It was so continuous and fluent and everything that I want for professional wrestling. And again, I know people look for the action in the ring. It's Royal Rumble matches. They're not going to be action in the ring like that. You're going to get punches, kicks, moments, finishing moves. <laughs> That's what a Royal Battle Royal Royal Rumble is. Um, Fatal four-way match to me perfectly marked and penned and we knew how it was going to happen like you openly said again which i i think you looked at me when i was even giving people uh thoughts that roman could look. i, I swapped it to be like what the fuck because i was like well yeah if that does happen like there is no does this happen is why you're a heel because <laughs> you're giving people hope there i give no them no hope i give them no hope. smash them stack them pen them should have happened i'm going to give this um five out of five for me, uh, John Cena coming over to Raw with the spinner title runs. It was just, it was different from it from SmackDown. It was a new world. I like Tony putting it, everybody's asking, what would this, what should this era be called? The Triple H era. How about that? And it might just be called that. And I How know, about that? You mentioned how there were no real legends coming out uh, yeah. like that, no surprises. And I, I said that when we did the prediction show because i think we had to do the video we had to do a prediction show and i said it you're like what surprise it's like well you're gonna have naomi uh but she's coming back right andrade came back the only real surprise like that that they did was pat mcafee and that was mm -hmm. and i said <clears throat> that i think that he took brock lesnar's spot um the dirt sheets are saying that that was Braun breaker mm -hmm. might be doesn't matter but when you have that much talent in the back shout out to willie down there we have that much talent in the back. You don't really need it because when you, it, I can't stand you wrestling fans sometimes. I love y'all, <laughs> but I don't love y'all because y'all complain when we don't see the legends. But then when we do see the legends, you complain still. Complain. That I ain't got a legend. Our truth is all the comic relief you needed. We did need to see. We did not need to see Cody Kingston again do something that we know he's gonna do and not win. Right? That's that's past it. Course Naomi didn't have to do it this time either. I'm glad they got rid of that shtick. Because it, it 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 ran its course, right? To, to to see things like that, I wasn't happy how 
Um, so I'll say some negatives, right? I didn't like how um, Finn Balor was treated at all. <laughs> like, damn, I was really shocked he was thrown out of there so fast, so easily. That kind of messed me off. Willie says he thought the Women's Royal Rumble was better. Yeah, I thought it had, I, 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 yeah, I think it was better for, for the moments that it had. But you said, we spoke about it earlier. I'm sorry, Jimmy and Jada, me. That, that to me was bigger than Cody and, and Punk. And I'm a Cody Rhodes and, and, and CM Punk mark. I really truly am. But I am also an Uso mark from day one. Okay. Um, but overall, again, man, four, uh, I mean, five out of five, John Cena, the uh, ratio Rodriguez, Tom Cena, spinner belts, just a phenomenal pay-per-view PLE from me and from my perspective and what I want for professional wrestling completely cannot wait for tomorrow. Glad there's no show for the mic, not sure tomorrow. Can we do this thing like this? Um, I, 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 well, I think there might have to be because there's a vengeance prediction show that has to take place. I think we'll talk about that. I don't know how people are home and how people's voices are doing, but um, I do know there is vengeance tonight. Um, from that, somebody, somebody said something about somebody was not winning something because they had a match. I'm like, well, it's Carmelo's in a match tomorrow as well. Like, you know, and he was out there wrestling. And Carmelo Hayes did a good performance. Didn't like what they did with Bobby Lashley at all. I thought that was that was trash to me. Um, but the women moment for me, yeah, I, I, I love Uso and Jimmy, but man, Rhea, uh, uh, I mean, Bianca Belair face to face with Jay Cargill, something that I did not want because everybody was speaking about it. So maybe I just was blind to it, was just phenomenal again shout out to this black girl magic the wwe is showing you how black can we just get the black men to be represented in such a strong manner as well other than that um that's my final thoughts that is the executive consultant i am mike knox we are here every single day damn near just go to unpop review entertainment wrestling on youtube i guarantee you it's something that you like if you don't like it like it anyway, right? Follow, subscribe, and share. Listen, we're gonna get about it here. Do not wake up tomorrow morning and say to yourself, I love me some me. Can't even do it, y'all. My voice is killing me. And don't love God. We are out of here, y'all. Peace. You ready? You ready?